My next guest clearly does not get paid by the hour because he's coming off another first round finish, this time over Colin Anglin at UFC Fight Night back on November 13th. It is Sean Woodson back here on the program. Sean, how's it going, man? Doing good, man. On cloud nine, riding this high. I ain't been down yet. Yes, and uh, congratulations, man. It was an epic finish, a great, great sequence that to get it done. Uh, just simple question, could that fight gone any better? No, I don't think so, man. You can't you can't ask for a much better than a first round finish. You know, that's what that's the goal each and every time. And I was able to achieve that this time and I'm super happy about it. Were you expecting the fight to end that quickly? Like, again, I think people thought, you know, Colin's obviously going to come and, and bring it. But we know the power that you have as well. Were you expecting that result uh, with it ending that quickly? No, I first finish, you know, like I said, that's what you always want. But I, I didn't think that uh, that was how this fight was going to play out. I knew, you know, I was coming for the finish and I was super confident that I would get the finish. But in the first round, yeah, no, nah, uh, you know, from watching this contender series fight, that dude's a dog. And like, you know, that was a, you know, he he, uh, you know, was real durable. And that fight took a lot of damage and stuck around. Oh, I'm sorry phone almost died but yeah he's a super durable guy super tough and then you know his last fight with Melsic, you know that went to the second round he took a lot of heat in that first round and survived and so yeah i, I definitely was expecting a, a dog fight a fight i, I thought it was gonna uh, take a lot to get that dude out of there but i was you know blessed to uh find the answer early the finger wag, the Dikembe Mutombo finger wag that you did during the fight. Uh, was that because you were like, like, what was that about? I was just curious about that. Like, was it that you knew you hurt him or what, or were that he wasn't hurting you? Like, take me through that sequence. So, yeah, that's something, you know, that's just me being me. You know, yeah. you know, my, my, my sparring partner, I just, uh, you know, I do stuff like that all the time in sparring, you know, fighting, you know, isn't just the physical aspect of it. Fighting, you know, there's a big mental part of it. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I play onto that a lot, but in that actual fight, like I said, I do it in the gym all the time, but in that fight, I don't even remember doing that. I don't even remember making like the conscious decision to do that right afterwards. And we're like in the, in the back in the apex, my one coach showed me a clip of the video and I thought that was of a fight that was going on. Like, you know, <laughs> at mine or something, I, I just, it didn't register me right away that that was me doing it. It looked so cool. Like, you know, the finger wag and then finished it right after. And I was just like, damn. And I told them, I'm like, I don't even remember doing that. But, uh, yeah, that was just, you know, that was just, a, uh, I guess that was just me, you know, letting him know that, oh, you know, you tipped your hand and you showed me you're hurt. And, you know, like, you know, I know you're hurt. Here I come. Yeah, it was a great sequence. If you haven't seen it, I'm, I mean, you must be living on a rock if you haven't seen the finish. It was amazing. It looked really good. I was telling you off air, it was like a sequence you'd see on like Street Fighter or something. So you get the big win, you get your hand raised. How do you celebrate after a big win like that? Because that was a huge fight. And I know everyone was talking about it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I celebrate the same way I do every time. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big guy for the division. The division cut a lot of weight, so I, I, I hit the junk food hard. Right afterwards, me and my team, we went to... Uh, pretty well-known pizza spot in Vegas called Pizza Rock that a bunch of people had recommended to me. So, yeah, went and got some good pizza. And then, uh, you know, my management hooks us up with those crumbled cookies after every fight. So I had those waiting for me back in the hotel room. So, yeah, we went and got some pizza, walked around on the strip for a little bit, checked out Vegas some. Because at all the times I've been to Vegas, I've never really got to, you know, check it out. I've always fought and then went to the hotel and then flew right back home the next day. But with this being the early fight card, we were done and out of there by like, it was before noon, I believe. So, yeah, we got to eat food, walk around, checked out Vegas, went back to the hotel, ate some cookies, ate some ice cream. And, uh, yeah, just replayed, watched the fight. And, uh, yeah, man, just uh, in, embraced the moment and just took it in and enjoyed it. What was it like getting to meet Max Holloway? I saw the photo on Instagram. That was so cool, man. Yeah, man, these these people are taking this Max Holloway stuff and running with it. I've been asked about, uh, you know, being, you know, Max says he's the best boxer in the UFC. I'm, you know, I feel like, you know, I have, you know, some of the best boxing in the UFC as well. Uh, yeah, Max is super cool, man. I hate how people are trying to like spin this into some kind of like, you know, disrespect. Are they? Thing. I haven't. Have, have, have people been saying that? Oh, because I guess because you said you were like a good boxer or something, so people are like, well, oh, now <laughs> Sean thinks, yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, leading up to it, uh, and even afterwards, a couple of other people asking me, you know, how do you feel about Max saying he's the best boxer in the UFC and stuff like that, and I just uh, gave my opinion on it, and I just feel like people are trying to make it seem like I was kind of talking uh, talking crap on him, which, I, you know, that wasn't the case at all. Got a ton of respect for that dude. That dude has in, inspired the hell out of me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a huge fan of his, and yeah, it was awesome getting to meet him. He was 
super cool guy. You know, sometimes some of these fighters aren't as cool as they, you know, may seem. But yeah, that dude was a, he's a stand up dude through and through. And it was awesome getting to meet him. What was the feedback like on social media after the fight? Because that was, again, you've had some good wins, but this one really, like I said, uh, got a lot of people's attention. Yeah, a lot of people have reached out to me. You know, a lot of people showing love. You know, my my followers are, you know, steadily going up by the minute. And, uh, yeah, I'm getting tons of messages. My uh, I can't make a dent in these damn uh, message requests. You got the message requests in and plus for ever since the fight and i've been you know getting back to people the best i can but yeah it's been overwhelming but i mean you know i appreciate all the support and all the love i'm getting it's it's amazing did anyone win any money on your fight i know you were a, a pretty decent favorite but i think that round one prop or even like the ko prop would have been pretty good value did you get anyone telling you they won hell, money hell yeah people are sending me pictures of their you know their ticket stubs or whatever and so many people are talking about you know like they had me in their parlays or yeah, they won money on me betting straight up or like, you know, as the prop bets and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I keep asking for my, my cut up and my little, you know, 10% or something, but ain't nobody sent it over yet. If I, <laughs> if I got a percentage of all the money people made on me, man, it might, uh, yeah, it might equal out to like my show money or something. <laughs> okay, there you go. And then kind of on money uh, on that note, were you surprised you didn't get a bonus? I figured, I know there was a lot of other good fights on the card, but I figured you would have, you would have been one for sure. Yeah, so uh, like right after the fight, I had a you know I had the feeling that I was like, man, I got a pretty good feeling. I'm that might have been bonus worthy, you know. Uh, first round finish, you know, pretty clean cut fight. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I thought I thought for sure it was definitely bonus worthy in my opinion. But then as the night played out, and as I seen some of the other first round finishes, and I think out of like a, out of eleven fights that were in car, like nine of them were finishes. I was like, ah, oh, damn, man, my chances are pretty slim now. And uh, but yeah, yeah, I, uh, I definitely thought if I would have been on a different car with less finishes, that I definitely would have got the bonus. But I'm, uh, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even too upset about it at all, man. I'm just blessed to pick up that win, start off. Uh, that was my first fight on a new contract, and on the new contract, it came with more money. So yeah, I was just happy to get my show and win money and come out, you know, unscathed basically, and yeah, just, just blessed to get the win. We're recording this on Tuesday, November 16th, just a few days after your fight. Uh, I saw on Instagram, I think you want Melsick next, right? And I know you sort of put, I love the way you did this, by the way. You're like, I want to fight you. Let's do this. Yeah, I think it would be a good fight. You've got, what, 24 hours to respond. And if not, I'm moving on. So what's the latest? Yeah, uh, no response yet. But yeah, that's definitely a fight I want. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, the whole 24 hours thing is, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm not going to pursue anything that, you know, if you give me the feeling at all that you don't want you don't want to fight, I'm done with it. I'm not going to pursue it because, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, make this dude, you know, in order to not seem like a punk or something. I don't want him to agree to the fight. I don't want anybody to agree to the to a fight that they don't want. And then, you know, have it, you know, maybe in the back of their head that, you know, like maybe two, three weeks out, they pull out from an injury. When I signed to fight a guy, I want to be. That's who's going to show. Uh, you know the my my one loss on my record came from you know I was scheduled to fight Kyle Nelson and then that fight uh, fell out short notice and I was sl slated to fight somebody else and that fight week I went through like three different opponents that fight week and you know I'm real big on preparation and yeah I just want to uh, yeah I just don't I don't like the whole short notice last minute replacement thing so when I call a guy out and when I sign a contract I want to be confident he's going to show up. And so, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, the clock's a ticking. I'm waiting for Melsic to respond. If he doesn't, then, yeah, I'm just going to move on and s see who else is down to fight in March. Are there any other names that come to mind, or you just want to reassess after if, if this doesn't pan out? Yeah, I'm, uh, I got my sights locked on Melsic right now. I really want that fight bad, man. I want that fight bad. I feel like it would, it would be a, you know, a super exciting fight. Definitely, you know, uh, has a lot of potential for fighter the night. Uh, and yeah, I, I just want, yeah, I want that fight bad. One one being, I know there's not a lot of guys, you know, raising their hand to fight that dude. He's tough, he's vicious, and uh, you know, he's a it's a fight that you know get, gets me excited. You know, I like I want that, I want that danger. You know, I don't, uh, and I also want. I feel like that's a fight that if I got, I'd be the underdog too. And those are the fights I want. I, I hate, I don't like being the favorite. I want to be the underdog each and every time. And yeah, I want that fight with Melsey. When would you like to fight next? Do you have that kind of plan? I'll probably enjoy the holidays, right? And then come back next year? 
Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I uh, you know, I want to be real active, but I, you know, I got to be smart about it. I got to make sure that I'm doing these weight cuts safely and uh, doing just doing right by my body. Uh, this fight against Colin, it was a long camp. It was about a ten to twelve week camp, you know, and you know, I don't play around. I train hard. So yeah, I would like to take you know, enjoy Thanksgiving, enjoy Christmas, you know, take the rest of November lightly. Take you know. Take uh, December pretty lightly. I'm still going to be training. Still going to be training, of course, just not you know, as hard as I would during a fight camp. We in Christmas in January, hit it hard, get back in the grind mode, start fight camp, and that'll leave me, uh, you know, I need at least eight weeks to cut the weight safely, you know. So January and February, train super hard, and, yeah, I'd be ready to rock May 1st. Or, yeah, I mean, not May 1st, March 1st is early, yeah. you know, as early as March as possible. Yeah, I'd like to get back in there in March. Okay. That makes sense. Would you ever take a short notice? Well, you kind of talked about it there. Probably wouldn't take short notice, but a fight at 55, if there was ever, you know, just to keep active or or are you pretty set on, you know, making the weight and going down to 45? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm dead set on 45. You know, I, uh, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I can make the weight. I can make the weight, you know, safely. I just, you know, I I feel like, you know, even aside from the weight, just eight weeks to prepare eight weeks for a training camp, eight weeks to, you know, really get in shape. Me, you know, me one to eight weeks. It it isn't solely about the weight cut. You know, I just want eight weeks to. I just want full fight camps. You know, I've you know I've dedicated my entire life to this. This ain't nothing to play around with. These fights, you know, are very meaningful. And yeah, this is my life, man. So I just want to go in there fully prepared. I don't want to you know play around with this at all. And and, and I want to take over this forty five pound division. I don't want to bounce up and down weight classes. You know, maybe when I uh. You know, maybe if, uh, yeah, I mean, I see myself fighting 45 for the rest of my career. I was going to say, maybe if my body does some weird things as I get older, you know, I've heard as you get older, the weight cuts are harder. But, uh, yeah, for for the foreseeable future, I definitely, my home is at 45. I want to take over this 45-pound division. Before we go, you done fighting fighters at Factory X, you think, for now? Uh, Because I know, obviously, it was Yusuf and then Colin, uh, his teammates. So, do you think you're in the clear from here on out? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, uh. I don't think they have any more featherweights left for me in the UFC. I think those yeah. were the only two guys. And yeah, yeah, I don't want to, you know, yeah, yeah, I think I'm done. With, I'm for sure think I'm done with Factory X from now on. I want to, you know, I, I, like you, like I told you last time, I got a lot of respect for those guys, man. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to. Uh, I like my, my toy. I don't want to cross paths with them anymore. Well, the good news out of this, too, is now you can go and train with Kraus again, right? Because that was one of the things, because he had an affiliation to that gym. So is that something you're looking at doing, is going back to glory and doing some training over there? Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely definitely looking forward to making some trips back out there. You know, it's been it's been a while. I mean, ever, you know, since the last time I've been out there, I still stayed in contact with Kraus, with Kraus and, you know, talked to him from here and there. But, yeah, it'll be good to get, get back out there and get some training with him, Grant. You know, Jason Witt, uh, David Onama, Mike Breeden, Julian, all those guys. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some work in with them for sure. And I always look forward to these interviews, Sean. Thanks so much for doing it, man, especially after a big win like that. Uh, If there's anyone you want to thank, sponsors, social media, you name it, I'll give you the last word. My man, I appreciate you. Uh, Yeah, just follow me on uh, Instagram. At Twitter, I'm not too savvy with the Twitter. Instagram is pretty much my only social media. STL Sniper 314. And uh, shout out to my all my team here at home, Wolves and Matt, uh, Project Deliverance, uh, Sub Zero Crowd Therapy, who help, who takes care of my, make sure my body's fresh going into these fights, and yeah, just my whole team here at home in St. Louis, man, St. Louis. I love my city. This is a, uh, this is my home. I ain't going nowhere.